Hi everyone, welcome to another Smug Mug Live. I am Alistair Jolly, your host as always. The show is brought to you by Flickr and Smug Mug. Thank you so much for joining me today. Wherever you are in the world, it's a pleasure to have you here. As always, a couple of things I always ask for at the start of the shows. Uh, give us a shout out in the comments. Uh, let us know where you are joining from. That is always fun to see which part of the world people are watching us today. And if you're enjoying this uh, series we have at Smug Mug Live, why not hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell notification, and that way you'll be notified whenever we have another show here on Smug Mug Live. Uh, in a few moments, I will be joined by the wonderful Renee Robin. Uh, but let me just tell you about uh, what's coming up. Next week, we have a couple of amazing episodes on Tuesday, I will be joined by dear friend David Grover, who is from Capture One, and he's going to give us uh, some insight into all the cool stuff uh, on Capture One. And then on Thursday next week, which I think is the 16th, it is, I'm going to be joined by the simply incredible Matthew Jordan Smith, who is a celebrity and fashion photographer, and he'll be joining us all the way from Japan. So... Without further ado, let me see if our guest is there today. Hi, Renee, are you with us? Hello, I'm here. Hi, Renee, <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you? Uh, I'm doing okay, I'm doing okay. <laughs> it's uh, It's been a few months since we last saw each other, but we've been keeping in touch and uh, we're doing okay. Uh, yeah, thank you one to day those, at a time. <laughs> yeah, thank you to people who are already shouting out uh, in the comments where they're joining us from got an international crowd already thank you so much everyone uh, I'll give you some shout outs about some of the countries in a moment I'll give you a chance to join uh, but let's set the scene where do we find you today Renee you're I'm assuming at home in Canada right I am yeah I'm in Edmonton Alberta so Edmonton, Alberta. home for now waiting it all out like everyone else <laughs> <laughs> Waiting what? What are you talking about? I don't know what yeah, doing. nothing's happening. Nothing's going on. <laughs> Is it summertime there yet? Yes, it's storm season, so it's really fun. So the uh, my favorite thing about Alberta in the summer is the storms, and uh, especially June and July. And it is in full swing right now. So I don't know. Uh, obviously, you don't get the kind of news we get here. But just a couple of weeks ago, Calgary got hammered with this crazy storm of like huge, like avocado sized hail it just like destroyed houses and cars and everything it was bananas and i was like i love storm season i feel so bad for the damage though <laughs> <laughs> i think i'd rather just have the rainy scottish weather and not the damaging hail storms although they sound pretty cool it's pretty cool to witness but yeah you got it you need home insurance <laughs> <laughs> um i'm delighted that renee has been a smug mug ambassador for well more more years than either of us care to remember probably right it's definitely been Much a good now. number of years yeah <laughs> uh so renee and i have spent uh some amazing times together all over the world uh at trade shows and conferences and you've been here in scotland uh doing your thing uh so it's a shame we can't puerto be rico. together puerto rico we spent some time there indeed yeah. and uh a whole group of people there that was fun yeah a little a little trip with the team from rgg edu and pro edu as they're now known uh yeah. so yeah we've we've spent a lot of great times working together but one of the funnest things we've done prior to this episode of smug mug live <laughs> is the last time we saw each other uh end of february we recorded a podcast together and yep. if you're not aware, we now have a podcast brought to you by Smug Mug and Flickr called The Photography Lounge. And last week we released an episode featuring Renee. So we don't have to do the whole who are you, what do you do thing. <laughs> you, we just encourage everybody to go check out the podcast because we cover all of it on there, right? Yeah, it's, it's far more extensive. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was a good podcast. That was, that was really uh, satisfying. It's, you do lots of podcasts, or I do lots of podcasts uh, from time to time, and that one at the end, I was like, ah, oh, that felt like just sitting down and having coffee with a friend, and that is very and, nice. Yeah, <laughs> a coffee in the photography lounge, that's kind of the whole concept, so um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it was good, and you know, the concept behind the podcast is I realized that I am with the world's best photographers, and I have amazing conversations with them, why don't I record these? So that was the whole concept of that you can find the photography lounge uh on all the podcast platforms wherever you listen to podcasts just go search 
for the photography lounge and we would appreciate your support over there give it a give it a little review over there once you've had a chance to to listen to it and get the full deep story of uh how renee got started and you know the, the things that inspire her motivate her and a little insight into some of the personal projects she's been doing but for anybody who's joining us today renee that doesn't know who you are shame on you but uh <laughs> give us a the the elevator pitch on who renee robin is the Coles notes. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I, <laughs> I'm a photographer and digital artist in Canada, and I uh, really like um, concept art and video games and fantasy novels and stuff, and so I make art that's inspired by that. <laughs> and before COVID, I traveled a bunch, and now I've been home more than I've been in years, and it's been, I mean, apart from financial stress, not too bad. <laughs> yeah, so... You, you, you're being very humble there and not uh, really selling yourself very well, but <laughs> she's an amazing uh, composite artist and definitely inspired by her love of computer games and novels, fantasy novels and stuff. So if you, I'm sure most people joining today probably know who you are. If not, you're in for a treat. You can go check out her website, obviously hosted on SmugMug, and uh, we'll get to all those links at the end. Uh, we thought... For most of this uh, episode, we would have you look at some of your projects and break down the, the kind of layers, the many, many, many layers that go into your images. Uh, but before we got we get to that, we thought we'd have a little bit of chat. And probably the most topical thing that's happening today, other than this show with Rene, is uh, <laughs> Canon released a new camera. And I know you're a Canon uh, user. Yes. Um, are you excited about the the new mirrorless cameras that came out today. Is that, do you get excited about gear? I do sometimes, yeah, it depends on the gear. Uh, if I can see something with it that immediately makes me go like, oh, well, that's not gonna work for me, then I'm not interested. Uh, but the EOS, the, the new system is quite cool. I mean, I was super impressed with the EOS R when it came out. Uh, we used it when we filmed uh, the horse project mm -hmm. that I was working on. So that was the camera that we used to film all the video. And it's beautiful and it worked really well. And I was super stressed because uh, what if there's a ton of like, I mean, we got nailed by snow and winter was like surprise for like a day and a half <laughs> <laughs> and only the day and a half that we were shooting. And so I was really concerned that it wasn't going to be able to hold up in the weather. And then it did. And I was like, well, this is pretty great. I'm actually kind of impressed. And so maybe mirrorless isn't something that I like it is something that potentially I can chase in the future that's always been my fear I mean I have lots of friends who shoot uh Sony the early Sonys and so on and they were just you know constantly changing batteries like yeah it's lighter but don't get it wet and like all this stuff and I was like I can't have gear that I got a baby like I just need it to survive what I can survive mm -hmm. and it looks like these new mirrorless systems from Canon can do that and that's very very cool because cutting weight in my bag would be Awesome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think the weight thing is probably one of the most exciting things uh, when you travel um, or when you're broken as often as you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen to the podcast to find out more about that. Um, yeah. The And you, you are, you know, you're not gentle on your gear, right? You, They're tools for yeah. you and you kind of use them like, a, you know, a construction worker would use their tools kind of thing, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, maybe it comes from having a trades background where I'm just like, this is a tool, I'm going to use it however it can be used. Uh, but I do need my gear to, to survive everything that I throw at it. So because if I can get my body there, then my gear better work when I get there. Yeah, I mean, I switched to mirrorless many years ago when I when I had my what I call my retirement from uh, photography being my my career uh, and moving to yeah. Smug Mug. But uh, I switched from Nikon to, to Fuji mirrorless so I'm not really in that canon world but I definitely have been quite interested by the news like, like the in-body stabilization and that type of stuff for some of the films that we do so yeah. we'll definitely have to check it out more but for now this is the place to be this is the most important thing you need to check out today this <laughs> conversation with Renee so uh, do you have any any plans to travel this year I mean not, like most of us all our plans were completely cut off and stopped do you have anything on the horizon or anything you feel comfortable about doing in the near future uh i mean i have no travel especially international coming up i mean everything's been cancelled for the next 18 months so far 
I was actually supposed to be in Washington, D.C. this week on a very, very cool job. And obviously that is not happening, (laughs) (laughs) which is unfortunate. It would have been, you know, it was something that's been in the works for the last year. And that would have been really great. But next year, year. (laughs) you know, this year we all get to take a deep breath and wait it out. (laughs) But uh, I mean, I am shooting in the studio occasionally now with very, very, very small crew. And the studio that I use is is quite large. I mean, between me and my subjects, it's like 45 feet and I'm shooting with a long zoom lens. Mm. So, you know, that's, that's acceptable for me, but yeah, I'm definitely cautious. I've had a few people come to me with projects and just be like, Hey, you know, what do you think? Like a crew of 10 people. And I'm like, eh, I'll just wait. Like I realize where I live has not been hard hit, but I'm also okay with not accidentally somehow contributing to that. Absolutely. We all need to be, to be smart and, and, you know, make a judgment on and go with our gut feeling. Um, a, yeah. a lot of what you do, and a lot of the times we've been together, we you've been capturing what you call plates, right? These kind of backgrounds to your images, and you have a huge collection of images. Has that helped you continue to work, even though you can't travel? Has that been allowed allowed you to complete projects and stuff because you have such a a stock of of imagery? Yeah, I know I'm 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 very lucky that way in that I have so much stuff that I can draw on and so it's if I really need something specific, I will probably reach out to photographers who live in those areas and say, "Hey, can you, you know, I have this this is my budget. Do you mind running out and photographing something like this?" So, but yeah, I do have I have uh I've worked very hard for this library over the last 12 years. <laughs> you, you certainly have. I mean, whenever you're anywhere, you're con- constantly taking images and angles and uh, plates yeah. and backgrounds just of every subject and typically in weather that most of us are like, well, ah, this isn't the kind of weather I'd want to photograph, but you love the the storms and the mood and the Give me the, the crappy the weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just really like that stuff. It's the, it's, it's the aesthetic yeah. and I enjoy it. <laughs> Well, it's great. As I say, we've got people giving a shout out. Currently, we are, we've got people all over the world. I'll give some shout outs. We've got some Ireland. We've got someone from Calgary, not too far from Ooh, you. Calgary. I'm yeah. going to be there tonight. Demarius Martinez. Wow. I don't know if that name is familiar to That's you. That's awesome. Uh, he from Vegas, from Davion. Oh, uh, Davion. Yeah. Hi. Lenny Ruiz <laughs> uh, is from Argentina. Uh, awesome. And uh, let's see, we've got New Orleans in the house as well. Someone's asking for a link to the podcast, so let me put that in the chat. There we go. Um, so that's cool. So, um, yeah, let me know when you buy the new Canon camera. I'm interested to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I need some more clients right now to be able to pay for that. Right Absolutely. now, I'm just like, oh, okay, rent. <laughs> so one one thing I haven't looked at. I'm sure it's um, I'm sure it's not inexpensive. So I haven't looked at the price of it yet. Yeah, it's it's six thousand Canadian, which is like four hundred US. It's like a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like two hundred and fifty pounds. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's not. Um, why don't we? I'm sure the guests are desperate for you to start showing some of your beautiful imagery. Um, oh, we've now got people shouting from Ontario. Hi, Gary nice. Gary Monroe, very Scottish oh, name awesome. from Ontario. Hi, Chip Riggs from Asheville. I'm not sure where Asheville awesome. is. That's a new one. Thanks, gentlemen. Uh, but yeah, would you want to share your screen and we'll start looking at some of your images and and uh, yeah, sure. have a little look through the hundreds just of layers? Open, open up one more. I was mm. just thinking about while we were talking and I was like, oh yeah, no, I should do that one. So. Uh, Renee said before we joined, she says, um, you know, we... I need to open an, an image that, what was it you said? An image that's that's inspiring or fun or something like, I can't remember what you said. And I was like, all oh, your images are amazing. And I guess, oh. it's, I guess it's what you still find exciting and yeah, cool well, to look I at. mean, I have a bunch of, I have a bunch of PSDs that are also just like, they're not very exciting, right? Like you look at them and you're like, oh, okay, that was only half a dozen layers. Like that's kind of boring. <laughs> oh, and then there's some that are just like a mess. Uh, I can I can walk you guys through an image that totally failed, and then I had to figure out how to make it work too. If you want, yeah, that's always fun. It was awful, <laughs> awful, awful, awful. It was so bad. I was so frustrated, and it's like one of my favorite images now. But my God, well, well I think uh, we'd like to see it all. And if you have uh, comments or questions at any point today, post those in the chat window. 
uh, and I'll feed those to Renee uh, either at the time you ask it if it's appropriate or at the end if we get to it. Uh, Chile is saying that the R5 should be around 3,900 US dollars. So. Uh, yeah, so 6,000 Canadian. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and hey Chip, thanks. Chip's saying that um, Asheville is in North Carolina. Thanks. And yeah. It's a new one on me, so thanks for letting North us know Carolina. who there it is. I'm <laughs> sure it's warm and humid wherever it is, Chip. That part of the world it gets very humid. And they have those big wolf spiders. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone I know who, from from the Carolinas is like, oh man, the wolf spiders. Like we love wolf spiders because they eat all the poisonous stuff. And I'm like, I don't know if I can live there. Yeah. <laughs> You just lost me okay. a spider, let alone poisonous. So. Well, wolf spiders are, they're, from my understanding, are uh, predators. So mm. they they eat the other bugs, which I'm all for, but still. <laughs> but it's a spider. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm not so good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Shall we jump over to your screen? Yeah, let's do it. I just popped it up here, so hey, Seth, make sure that Seth McCulloch is in the house. Oh, Seth showed up. Yeah. yeah, Seth, don't judge me too harshly. These are personal project files. <laughs> <laughs> See, Renee's going to show personal project files rather than you know corporate work or client work, um, just to keep yeah. things uh, appropriate for the channel and not share anything she shouldn't be, obviously. But uh, she said to me again, oh, these these aren't great. The file, you know, the file is a personal project. I'm not as I'm not as kind of, what's the word, focused uh, on official. naming efficient, <laughs> uh, so um, we'll forgive you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that is that is the disclaimer that I, I always like to tell people with these files, that these are personal project files. Don't do it this way. <laughs> <laughs> because when I, I don't know how about how any of the other Photoshoppers in here work, but if you're doing a personal project, oftentimes it's like sketching. Right. So you're just kind of like loosely playing with stuff and like, oh, maybe this and maybe this. And then you just like kind of let your brain wander. And then at the end, you're like, oh, that actually worked out. Uh, that's how I am with personal work. But it does mean that. How I handle my commercial client files doesn't look anything like this. Yeah. <laughs> so people are going to be like, why, why aren't there groups and names and layers and stuff? And I'm just like. It's all I have good. layers in here where I'm like, I don't know what that file, that layer does, but it's there. It's all good. Seth, <laughs> Seth, Seth said it well. Seth says, you're in a safe space here. That's for true. <laughs> what is it? He, too, he's but... called it? he calls it a trust nest. I like that. You're welcome to the trust <laughs> nest. <laughs> I'm gonna, this is YouTube, man. Trademark this that, is YouTube comment. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Well, anyway. Right, let's, let's, uh, I'm going to jump over to your screen. Let's see. There we go. Cool. Okay. We're over on your screen now. Yeah. So yeah, this was a personal project that was super fun. And I was like, well, let's start with some easier files and then we'll get to the more fun stuff. Uh, so yeah, this was a project that I did with a friend of mine, Ray. And I was like, you know, I was, I'd photographed him in PEI uh, the summer earlier. And I was like, right, dude, you have like this look. And I was talking to some friends and I was like, would it be weird if I asked him to be Santa? Cause he has like the beard and everything, and it was around Christmas, so kids at this point are just like, oh my god, it's real life Santa. And I was like, well, what if we just do it? So, yeah, I made the the head wreath thingy and tried mixing like a Yule, you know, pagan-ish, but more modern, I don't know. I just kind of was like, I have this stuff, let's see what happens. And so that's what we made, and I really like it, but it was very simple to make. It was It was very easy. So this was the raw file here. Uh, and then, of course, first thing in is just putting on masking in the cloud texture in the background. And, you know, I always people always ask, you know, which how do you choose which backgrounds to work on? And in this case here, I chose clouds because they're very subtle. They don't have a lot of opinion. You know, some background pieces have they have a loud voice and then they compete with the subject. And in this case, the subject is is where I want the voice to be. So that's why I made that choice. Um, and then this is a frequency separation layer. So uh, Seth is probably rolling over right now, just being like, oh my God, why isn't it in a group? But it's not. <laughs> None of these things are. Uh, but yeah, so frequency separation is just, you know, doing the cleanup, handling. Uh, I should probably zoom in here a little bit easier so you guys can see. This is a 4K monitor. But yeah, so just uh, just doing a little bit of cleanup. There was that little twig sticking down and uh, cleaning up some of the fabric wrinkles and so on. Uh, and then this is just a curves adjustment. So just like brightening up the center a little bit, 
kind of pulling the focus more towards the face. And then this layer here is just a hue saturation layer where I was just getting rid of some of the yellow in the, the fur and the beard. So uh, the nice thing about hue saturation layers, whenever you have yellowness in a beard or anyone with silver hair, it's very common that the hair will go a little bit yellow without using a purple shampoo, uh, is you just go to your yellows and just drop the saturation and up the lightness in this case is what I did. And then just loosely mask it in. So I didn't want it to be perfectly white because, of course, like a pure white beard sometimes looks a little bit strange. But I just wanted to make it slightly less obvious. Yeah. Uh, and then these are just snow layers. I have a, a, a stock store that you can access through my website where I made a bunch of these snow layers, like these snow packs. And I just like stacked a couple of them over top because I was like, he's Santa and he's basically magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I've started doing a lot of color grading and normally this would be a smart object. So uh, if you're color grading in Adobe Camera Raw, uh, I highly recommend shooting it or creating the layer as a smart object because then you can pop in and out of ACR and make your changes and so you don't lose the data, the choices that you made. But this is personal work and I did not do that. <laughs> Um, the fact it's personal work, is that why they're just all called layer one, layer two, layer three? All of these files that I'm walking you through, they're like layer one, layer two, layer three, copy, copy, copy. Yeah. If yeah, you if you, if it was a, a client's <laughs> job, do are you quite fastidious about yeah. naming them all? And Especially if there's uh, any chance of re-edits, you know, so if, it, if it's something quick like headshots, mm -hmm. then I mean, that's color grading and skin retouching and then done. So it's very obvious, but if it's like a big composite like these, then yeah, absolutely, because there's definitely revisions. And so I need to know exactly what every layer is, or if it's getting sent off to another artist, they need to know what I did too. So yeah, I'm I'm far more careful with, with client work, especially if there's a team involved. So there's typically a, an order in the way things are done, and then how I do it in my personal work is the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah. It's like my worst fear when someone's like, oh, I really love that file. I would love to buy the file for licensing or whatever. And I'm like, do you want it as is or do you want to make changes? Because <laughs> if you want to make changes, I'm going to have to rebuild this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's there's lots of questions coming in, but I'll let you finish uh, sort of uh, breaking down these layers. If I could just ask it, people, when you ask a question, it really helps me if you start the sentence with the word question. That way, when it's scrolling through, it's easy for me to find all the questions. Some of you are doing that already, which is awesome. But uh, I'll let you finish the breakdown on this one, Renee. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so this one, this layer here, it was just adding a little bit of blue in his eyes. So Ray has spectacularly blue eyes. But I was like, well, if he's this magical being, let's like push that a little bit further. And so I made them really, really blue. Uh, and then here is a uh, just a texture layer basically I made it popped it back into ACR and uh, I just pushed the clarity slider a little bit I was like you know it's it's nice it's smooth it's soft uh, but I have this thing where I kind of just I like these images to be a little bit crunchy so because I print everything on metallic paper and on aluminum sheets and that has a way of smoothing out the file a little bit which I find aesthetically very pleasing uh, but it does mean that I, I will push the clarity just a tiny little bit so that that smoothness is counteracted. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't know, I just love how my work looks on metal and metallic. I've printed it on a lot of materials and I love, love, love metallic. I actually, this photo behind me, this one here is a huge, huge metallic print. So 40 by 60. And it's, it's this big sheet of aluminum and I just love how it looks. So yeah, I, I build my files at least for personal work, again, to be printed on metal to look good on metallic paper. So um, again, if I'm working on client stuff, I have to know what it's getting printed on, if it's getting printed at all, because that will change how I process the files. Absolutely. But you, yeah, so that's that's like a super quick one. This this came together in like 40 minutes. Cool. You mentioned uh, you made his eyes more blue. There's a layer for that, but how, how did you do that? Oh, yeah. So that's super easy. Uh, it's uh, basically I created a soft light layer. So I just created a new layer and we're just going to call this color for now. And there's a bunch of different ways to do it again, uh, like always. And just change this blending mode. And you can do this uh, when you're creating a layer as well. But so put that on soft light and let's grab a color. Do, 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 do. 
I'm sitting in a different spot than I usually do, so <laughs> hitting my mouse in different places. Yeah, so soft light. Oh, my scratch disk is full. Well, that's <laughs> fun. Uh, I'm going to have to close some of these files, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so color layer, uh, soft light layer, you just basically just paint, paint the color on. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's a really nice way to do gentle color adjustments, such as uh, improving color or eye color and so on. So. Yeah, you just paint color and mask it where you want it to be. Yeah. That's cool, though. Yeah. That's the only only layer you named on that file was the one you did for me. I feel feel honored. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm being witnessed. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole there's a whole chat you're going to have to read afterwards about naming. Uh, it's mostly oh, yeah. mostly safe, having some fun. Um, yeah. Name your layers. Oh my god, name and group them. It will. It makes your life so much easier. You're going to see going through these of like. I'm gonna open up a file and there's gonna be a layer. I'm like, I don't know what that does. <laughs> <laughs> right before you before you go to the next one, let's uh, look at a couple of these questions. Um, uh, there's a few folk we should give a shout out to. Uh, Mezami is in the chat. Hey man, thanks for hey, joining. Man. Must be like, I don't know, three a.m. in the morning with you or something crazy like that. Whatever. I did a live with him that we started at two forty-five in the morning. We ended at six in the morning. He yeah. can stay awake. <laughs> That's these, that's these young twitchers for you, you know, they can... Uh, there's another guy here who says it's a trap, some guy called Curtis Jones, don't know who he is. I think, oh, yeah. think you're in the wrong channel, dude, don't know who you are. <laughs> Good to see you all. Uh, right, there was a question here, um, I think it's from Chile. It says, Rumi, uh, do you bring your raw images into something like Lightroom, Lightroom or another digital asset management first? Adjust there first, or and then into PS, or yeah. directly into yeah, PS. Yeah, so when I'm photographing in the studio like this, I, I photograph everything tethered to capture one, and so that's where I'll do a lot of my base cleanup. So this raw file isn't technically the raw file; it's just the imported. Uh, so this is after I've done just like a little bit of work. I do like to keep the work that I do in capture one a little minimal, but they do have this really great skin magic mathematical witchcraft that I love. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, capture one, I do do my, my base level work in there and then I pull it over into Photoshop from there. So. Cool. All right. Let's see what else. There was another one here. Gary Monroe asks, how do you organize all your plates and or assets such as cl uh, plates of clouds, for instance, to find them later? Yeah, exactly. So I have a folder of clouds and then uh, within that folder, I have them titled by the location that I photographed them in the year and what kind of weather that was that day. So I will have something like 2017 St. Albert storm uh, or then I'll have, you know, 2018 Vancouver cloud texture, right? So I know cloud texture is basically like what I use with Ray. Uh, whereas skies are, you know, like a wider angle shot and it's it's not necessarily the detail of the cloud, it's the whole thing. So when I want to use for a proper sky replacement. So yeah, then I have that. And then for the backgrounds themselves, I titled them by the location and the year. And so, you know, it'll be, you know, 2016 uh, Rival Abbey, right? Uh, you know, or, or I'll title it by England first, so it'll be country and then which if it's a ruined site or if it's whatever. So yeah, it's chaotic though <laughs> because there's so many places that I've forgotten. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll literally just spend an afternoon just opening up each of those folders and just like refreshing my memory what's in there. Because sometimes when I look at the background pieces, that'll inspire me to be like, oh yeah, I forgot I photographed this. And then I'll go, oops, sorry. And then I'll go and make something. Okay. So yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. you, you broke up a couple of times there. So tell Curtis to... Tell Curtis to get off Netflix and we'll be fine. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, Mez says it's uh, 2.26 a.m. So nice. living the creative lifestyle right there. Yeah. That's how you do it. Um, uh, Chili says, thank you so much. She says she's going to start looking at Capture One now for myself. Well, I'm going to give a shout out to our Love episode Capture we've got. One. Yeah, episode next Tuesday. Join us next Tuesday. I have David Grover joining me on the show. Um, and he... David knows everything. He is the trainer at Capture One. Um, yep. Him and Mez know everything about uh, Capture One. But yeah, join the show next Tuesday. That will be a fun one with David for sure. Get to yeah, know all I've the always, 
I've always been super impressed with Capture One. I mean, it, it is a very different program, very different program from anything that Adobe's making. It's a very different interface, uh, and it does take some time to get used to, but my favorite thing about Capture One is that anything that you want to learn about the program, whatever it does, they have, like David Grover has videos on how to do everything that exists in the program, and it's completely for free. You can just go to their website and just start watching videos. And you're just like, how do I get started in Capture One? There's a video for it. How do I do this? There's a video for it. You know, like there's no guessing, right? Which is the nice thing about these programs who have been made in the later years and completely deconstructed and rebuilt that, you know, there's this massive library of like, this is how everything happens. And, you know, it's it's really nice being there and part of these companies as they're building up and taking more space. Indeed. Um, few, uh, Seth actually mentioned um, he wasn't familiar that you did stock uh, textures and stuff like that. So he's obviously yeah, been I... away looking at all your packs while we're talking. <laughs> yeah, I have a bunch of stuff that I need to actually put online. Some of them, a lot of packs are half made. Uh, and I just have this, I don't know how anyone else feels on this, but every now and then there's like this invisible barrier and you're like, all I have to do is this one little thing and it's done. And you're just like, I'm going to read a book. Yeah. Just it's <laughs> my stock store is that for me. <laughs> I will redo my website. I will redo everything. But for some reason, my stock store, I'm so slow to update. He says he loves the pack names, super fluffy clouds or something. He says fluffy, Thank you. super I love fluffy that. snow pack. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The snow, the snow and the sparks packs are the ones that definitely sell the most. And they're actually also with my own work, the ones I use the most. I use all my own stock packs all the time. Yeah. So. And Curtis says he's obviously not watching Netflix because he's watching this stream. But either way, <laughs> you're using all our bandwidth, dude. That's the main <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think he actually signed off. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he won't hear this for 30 seconds. If he's watching, there'll be a 30 second delay. So you'll just know you're looking at him for some reason. No, uh, he stopped. He, he just gave me this really sulky face and turned off the iPad. <laughs> sorry. sorry, Curtis. You can, you can watch the replay. You can watch it as often <laughs> as you like. <laughs> right, shall we jump to another image? Yeah, for sure. Let's go. Ooh, pirate ships or a broken yeah, ship. Yeah, I, I photographed this out in Prince Edward Island, actually. Um, so, yeah, this was the raw file. Um, obviously I like to photograph with my horizon straight. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. The, the world was moving <laughs> fast that day. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I straightened that out <laughs> and I made her a little smaller, but I actually, uh, swapped out the whole background. I just masked her out, uh, with an image that I had photographed in Puerto Rico, actually the trip that, mm -hmm. uh, we were on with everyone. So yeah, that was, that was this file basically I was like because the ocean was so pretty that day and I have just tons and tons and tons of footage of it now I would never put someone I'm such a chicken I'm so afraid of people getting hurt which is another reason why I like compositing because people will be safe <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know this ocean is is super quiet super boring I mean it's a PEI coastline so it's very chill and I was like I don't really want it to be chill but this this ocean here where there was like a massive undertow and everything. And, uh, yeah, but <clears throat> it's not me. that chill. It's sliding off the planet is, you know, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, yeah. teasing you, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So that's what I just switched it out to. I knew when I photographed this stuff in P in, uh, Puerto Rico, I was like, okay, well I gotta, I'm going to do something with this one day. And then this model, uh, her name is, um, Kelly Lynn and she came over from Halifax and we shot these and I just love them but yeah so then I added in this pirate ship stuff here and so let me let's see here oops track padding sucks disable layer mask yeah oh. so let me see here oh. that was the file <laughs> it's not That's even a real ship no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's what I did with it. <laughs> I just took a bunch of those photographs and I just, like, cut it all up and smashed it together. And so, yeah, that's where that started from. And I so I just made it darker, just did some clipping mask, hue saturation curves, trying to counteract the, like, abysmally high noise file that those ships were photographed at. I mean, it was so... 
it was like ISO a billion on a 5D Mark II, so <laughs> it wasn't very good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so then here is uh, uh, channel masking. Looks like this. So, and I was like, okay, well, let's just turn that up a little bit, add a little bit of green. You know, I wasn't really feeling, I have this like distaste for blues and magentas. I, I like blues, but I don't like magenta looking blues. I'm always kind of like down with magenta. Mm. Uh, then this color lookup table. I mean, at the time I was making this, I really like color lookup tables. And then these are uh, ACR layers. Uh, sorry, this is a just like painting. I merged everything up and just painted on it. Don't do that. <laughs> but I did. Uh, then this is an ACR layer where it was contrast and uh, detail, you know, texture and so on and so forth. What's an ECR and this, layer? Adobe Camera Raw. Sorry, I shortcut. Thank That's you. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I shortcut a lot. Uh, this is obviously just another duplicated layer, and I pushed the highlights a little bit further. And there was just a little tiny bit of liquify work there. Um, if you ever want, if you're ever feeling like you never noticed or loved enough on the internet, post a before and after of a liquify job. <laughs> The internet really appreciates it. I'm gonna, gonna get <laughs> suddenly have lots of people talking to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you'll have lots of comments for sure. Um, but yeah, this is just uh, you know there was like a bump in her hair that was looking up kind of funny because of course we dunked her the poor thing in the ocean. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's that file. That's kind of how those. It's went. interesting because we were pretty close together when you took that image of the the ocean, right, the sea. Mm -hmm. Uh, when yeah. we were in Puerto Rico together. And, you know, I spent, you know, 15, 20 minutes taking some images of the crashing waves and I thought they were really good. And then many of us sat down and had a beer or two and you were still photographing away, photographing away. And we were like, how long is Rene <laughs> going to stand there photographing the same wave over and over and over? But yeah. now that, you know, we're way more familiar with the way you work, you probably were comfortable that you had the right wave for this type mm -hmm. of shot, right? Because you just have such a stockpile of waves doing all yeah. different things and different angles and different light and yeah. Yeah, that was that was just it. I mean, what it is in this case that I needed was uh, waves that would match the same depth, you know, that had similar texture here, right? That would be not a complete nightmare to mask out because I need this reflection here, mm -hmm. right? So this foamy, foamy water these ripples have to align if I want to seamlessly blend them together. Like, yeah, okay, I could just cut it out and then just replace it and everything. But I, I like to let reality speak as much as it can, which is ridiculous because I'm a composite artist. But I, if I can use nature, then I will use nature. Yeah. And you, you probably have every focal length that you had and orientation of all those different waves at different lengths and widths. Yeah, and different angles, top down, bottom down, um, wide angle, zoomed in. And uh, yeah, because I don't know necessarily how I'm going to use everything in the future. So I definitely just photograph it all because I would rather deal with sitting out there and photographing something for a few hours and have the files that I need than go back and be like, oh man, I wish I had X. Right. And I mean, I've never been back to Puerto Rico. I'd never been to Puerto Rico before. I'd never been back since. And the ocean was gorgeous that day. So, yeah, it was yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal day, evening. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, a, few, a few comments while you've been talking. Um, let's see. Chris says it reminds him of Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> um, there you go. Um, and if comments, a lot of people are loving the toy ship. All right. Mezumi loves, he loves it. Cool. <laughs> toy ship. And Seth says, that's awesome. A lot of people wouldn't let finding the right actual ship asset to shoot stand in their way. He's like, screw it, buy a toy ship, hold it, shoot it, bam. You know, so, mm -hmm. yeah, it's cool that um, you had a, a toy ship to do it rather than spending time trying to find a, an actual well, ship to photograph. Or, the thing or is wreck. that I actually, I spent a bunch of time trying to find tall ships to photograph and they were all too modern and I didn't like the look or the light was never right. And there was just, there was just always something wrong with it. And then I was in the Netherlands with uh, friends of mine, uh, you know, Richard Turborg. Yeah. He's been on and, the show. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, we went to this restaurant in this tiny little town on the ocean and this restaurant was full of model ships. And I was like, can I, photograph some of these <laughs> like I had my camera with it with me and uh they said yes 
And I went back a few years later with a better camera and tried to photograph some of them again. But I, I, it is tricky using a model ship because you have to make it not look like a model ship because model ships, the, the, the thing with them is that the material looks the wrong scale. So string looks like string. It doesn't look like big, heavy cables. And the fabric, you can see the lines in the material, the stitching and everything, right? Whereas normally you would never see the stitching. So it takes actually quite a bit of work to make a model ship look like a real ship. And masking out all those lines is horrific. Mm. <laughs> like masking out all of these, these little, oh, it's garbage. I super hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, Seth. She didn't even have to buy the ship. She literally took a photograph of someone else's ship. So even better. Yeah, I, Frugal. I would love to buy them. <laughs> I would love to buy them. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've also looked into, you know, model ships online and they're expensive. Holy mm. crap. It is a whole subculture that I assumed yep. existed, but didn't know existed. And I mean, some of these ships, like the, the really, really nice ones are thousands of dollars. Yeah, a lot of time and sweat equity goes into those. So the right. They're, they're art pieces. Pieces of art. Amazing. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Mez asks a great question. He says, how do you decide on the final composite? Do you have lots of, mm, that doesn't look the way I want it to, and then redo it again moments? Oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless something, especially if I'm working with like a good art director or something, if it's personal work and I'm just sitting down and I'm like, I have this stock plate, what am I going to do with it? Uh, that's, that's very much so like all over the place, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's going this direction, then going that direction and whatever. Yeah. So there, there's a whole hodgepodge. Um, I can, I can walk you, I can walk you guys through a file that just did not work out. Yeah, before, <laughs> it worked out in the end. Before we get was, to that. Yeah, because Gary, Gary asks, um, Gary Moore says, how do you find a side on a model for a composite you have in your head? What, you know, and kind of to add to that, you know, what comes first, the model, the vision, the idea? How, you know, how do you get all of the it. model? All, all of the above. So sometimes I have, I'll, I'll meet someone and I'll go, oh, my God, your look is perfect for X. Or other times I'll have the concept first and I'm like, oh, I can't, I need to find a model for X, like finding Ray, right? So meeting Ray was like, oh my God, I can do all this stuff with this look. That's amazing. I'm so excited. Right. And then, then there's the other side of, you know, like I, I started making work with Ray that I never thought I would make because I hadn't met the right model. Uh, and that was really exciting. And then other times, like, in this case with Kelly. So Kelly, she's the model with the girl jumping off the building with the little tiny wings. Oh, it's one of my favorite images you use. Yeah, so that's but, her. Ah, there you, you go. Know. And we have that printed at headquarters in San Francisco. It's actually printed it's on huge. It's actually printed huge on uh on the floor uh, of one of our um stairwells in the office. So you actually come down the stairs looking at it. It's just a phenomenal piece. We all love that image. So so this is the same model. That's really interesting. <laughs> same model. Yeah, exactly. So I'd worked with her before and I was like, yeah, like let's let's just do some stuff. I love her personality. I love her attitude. Like she always shows up on time. She gives it her everything. And so her personality inspires me, right? Working with her inspires me. So, um, yeah, it's, all of the above, you know, how do you find models? Well, I mean, how do you find friends? You know, sometimes you just, you just meet someone and you're like, oh yeah, this person kind of unlocks the next level <laughs> for me for whatever reason. So how do you make friends yeah, and influence people? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, should we... When I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Should we look at another yeah. image? Yeah, let's do it up. Let's see here. No. Maybe you want to close some and free up some scratch disk. Exactly. <laughs> close them as you go. <laughs> Yeah, uh, how are we doing on time here? Okay, good. Have a good uh, yeah, so this one here was with Linda Friesen. She is a Dutch designer. This is the raw file. She's amazing. So that she's the designer and the model in this. So she handmade this corset and this tool skirt and the headdress, and she's basically magic. Mm. Uh, and so in this case, she showed up. I was just like, I just really would love to work with you. You know, and she said that she was interested and she showed up with this dress and I was like, wow. oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was, it was magic. So That's yeah, quite special to find someone that's the designer and able to model it as well. It's Dutch saves women, a lot man. of work. There's, there's <laughs> a bunch of them. There's a bunch of uh, Dutch models and designers that are just like this all in one package and they're 
yeah, they're just, they're so sweet and so kind and they're just great to work with. So I can't say enough good things about them. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, she's great. Um, but yeah, so first things first was I resized her and put her onto the ground here. So it, this background, I, we decided that we wanted to do something that was like, you know, she was the queen of the moon, right? And I was like, well, what background do we have? What pieces do I have that are kind of moon-like landscape? And so I'd photographed a bunch of lava flows in Hawaii a few years ago. And so I was like, well, that's like moon texture. I I tried out some stuff from Death Valley and other deserts and stuff. It didn't really quite work. So uh, yeah, this was this was the the piece here. So I added in this shadow here because she was going to be backlit. Had I known when I photographed her that I was going to backlight her, I probably would have put the light behind her so that it wrapped around her. But in this case, I had to paint it in digitally, which kind of sucked, but it happens. Um, yeah, so then here's the sky. And so I'll break down this for you guys. Shmerp. So moon. <laughs> Um, you can see that there's like a little outline of, well, I don't know, maybe you guys can see it, but I made a masking error. <laughs> there's like some of the leftover square here. Uh, and then these are the sky colors that I put on there. So I just reduced the opacity of the layers. And, and then I put in a little bit more. And then I started hand painting in uh, just on the layers itself, trying to get the color nice on the skin and everything else. Because, you know, she's supposed to look super ethereal and shiny and I'm starting to make this light wrap around her waist and then more moon because I was like that's not enough I needed to put another layer on top because I'd put all these color layers over top of it and so I tried moving it on top and then the colors wasn't quite right and yeah. it's like sketching like I said personal work is just like putting lines down and just being like does this work does this not work so in that case how did you add more moon then just just duplicated the duplicated layer. layer. Um, yeah, exactly. So this layer that I have down here, it's it's literally a duplication. It's just one more. Just, and then I just reduced the opacity a little bit because if it was too strong, then it's just like, bam, the super bright moon. And I was like, I kind of want it to blend in. Um, yeah, so that's what I did. It's just another layer and then reduce the opacity a bit. And then these are just like some color splobby stuff. You know, I, I put some of the this, this snow textures again kind of trying to make them look like stars so i picked some of the smaller snow textures that i have and uh basically i just made a texture layer and uh had some color on it and then more again and more again <laughs> just kind of like smearing them around because yeah uh, snow can look like stars if you do it right <laughs> is that technical term blodgy smudgy stuff is that yeah that's technical? my technical term that's exactly yeah. what they're called right yeah <laughs> yeah What's your favorite yeah. brush? Bludgy, smudgy brush? Yeah, number. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my favorite brush is the Splatter 59 brush in Photoshop. Oh, someone called it out earlier. I think it yeah. may have been Maze. Yeah, I love that brush. It. He says he, you introduced him to 59. Yeah, I love that brush. I, I hate that the new versions of Photoshop hit it in their legacy brushes, which means they're going to probably disappear eventually. But I, I love that brush. Love, love, love it. I can't find the exact comment, but you definitely called out that you introduced yeah. them to that brush. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that brush. Um, yeah, so then this is a color effects layer. Uh, of course, it was owned by Nick Software at the time, or maybe it was Google already, but DxO owns it now. Uh, yeah, so it's just a detail extraction of just like pulling forward a bunch of that detail. It is making it look a little HDRE, but I was okay with it. Um, and this is another one of those layers of like, I don't know why that layer's there, but it is. It's a copy layer. <laughs> um, this is another soft light layer. So this is what I was talking about with uh, painting color. So you can also paint light as well. So you can you can dodge and burn with soft light layers, overlay layers, uh, curves, blah, blah, blah. But yes, yeah, so this was just like painting in this soft, glowy, wrappy light around her, this moon behind her. Selective color adjustments. Uh, I started adding magenta. This is always whenever I work on a file when I start making bad choices, when I start adding magenta, <laughs> don't add magenta. <laughs> uh, and then just another texture layer and then clipping cause it was yellow and I was like, I don't really want it to be yellow. So I just uh, clipped hue, saturation and curves layers to it. Another curves layer. Cause I'm trying to counteract the magenta. Cause I'm like, I've made a mistake. <laughs> more blue, more blue, um, more blue. 
and then a frequency separation layer just to clean everything up and more color again. <laughs> so, and then this is another, this is probably an Adobe Camera Raw layer where I'm just pulling up the highlights a little bit. And then soft light layer again, adding more color, hand painting some stuff in. This is a high pass layer for sharpening. This is, uh, I used to sharpen using high pass, mm -hmm. but uh, I now use the smart sharpen filter in Photoshop. It's really good. Uh, and then. We could probably do a whole episode on sharpening. It's a, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's a There's session so many in itself. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, again, oh, that was just like a little bit of, uh, Looks like I was using the dodge tool there just to bring out some of these things. And then a, a channel mask again, just to increase the brightness a little bit. And a watermark. So that, that dodging yeah. you did right at the bottom of the dress, it really makes those uh, pieces of snow look like they're being backlit by the sun. It adds quite a, quite a significant element to that final image, actually. Yeah. I, I like it a lot. I mean, that's one of the few things I like the dodge tool for is that I can set it to highlights. And so it's only going to be affecting the brightest points in that area. And so I was like, perfect. I just wanted to affect the stars. And so, yeah, I just like brought it around because I wanted her to be in the image, not on the image. And so that's oftentimes where a lot of these layers will come from is that I'm trying to like wrap everything together. That's great. Um, I, you mentioned earlier, obviously the, the podcast episode that we did together uh, at the photography lounge there's a there's a long conversation a fairly long section conversation we have in there about how much time you spend on an image and how you decide how much time you're going to spend on it so i'm not going to get you to answer that here because i'm going to encourage people to go check out the episode <laughs> i did post a, a link in the chat uh but i highly recommend you listen to it there's a great episode of how uh, Renee focuses herself and decides just how long she's going to spend on an image, especially for a personal project, over how long she spends on uh, a client image. So I would encourage you to go listen to that because it was a real, uh, a real <laughs> nugget of gold for me as to you know how you do that and decide when an image is finished or not. So that's cool. So sh we won't well, mention. I'm glad it time. was helpful. Yep, secrets. <laughs> secrets. <laughs> it's a, little, a little tease to make people go check out the podcast. Uh, got another question here uh, from Sash. He asks, uh, "Do you have a vision board or plan well in advance before you decide on a composite you want to create, or do you just think of an idea on the top of your head and go with it as soon as you capture a model?" Customer work, it's mood board, vision board, through and through. Uh, you know, when it comes to customer work, we even have pre-visualized sketches and so on because I want to be able to deliver the files as quick as I can. Um, I have a couple of customers who are exceptions to that, but not very many. It's always going to go smoother when everything's pre-visualized ahead of time. When it comes to personal work, I, I do look at it as if I'm – um, you know, I, I want – the image to tell me what it wants to be. So, because then I'm just like letting my mind wander. Where is it going to go? What's going to happen? Uh, and yeah, so both. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a, an interesting thing. Another thing that we've done together is we made a smug mug film uh, about Renee, which is here on the channel you're watching uh, on YouTube where you're watching smug mug live. You'll be able to find dreams uh, of a digital artist, the film we made about Renee. And there's a there's a short glimpse in that film of you working on mood boards and yeah. uh, ideas and plans, uh, and you've got them all pinned up in the wall and there's, you know, yeah. dozens upon dozens of them. So it'll give you, Sasha, it'll give, if you go watch that film, it gives you a little glimpse about the type of effort and work she puts into the, the pre-planning of those images. Um, Gary asks, how do you know when an image is done? Uh, I think that you may have been asking that just as we spoke about the podcast. Gary, go listen to the podcast. There's a, a little section in there that will answer that for you. Uh, so, yeah, shall we look at the, the next image and then we'll get some more questions? Yeah, for sure. How much time do we have left? We have as long as you are willing to give us. It's as simple <laughs> as that. We have nowhere okay. to go. <laughs> nowhere to go. Can't go traveling. So True. we're yeah, just going to sit here and talk. So, yeah, no, no, well, no fixed time. Today is a Dutch day, so... <laughs> Dutch day. This is Richard Terborg. Richard Terborg, dear friend of ours, and he joined me here a few weeks ago. So great insight into the work that 
uh, Richard had been doing during lockdown, uh, taking portraits uh, through glass of people and a lot of reflections and stuff. Great episode. So, God, I'm just pimping out all my own stuff, but it's a great episode. So, go <laughs> oh, check Richard's that out. An amazing, Richard's he an amazing is. guy. So, wonderful yeah, human. Um, he, he had been brought over to Canada uh, to speak for the PPOC Alberta branch, which was great because it was an amazing talk. And, uh, and I was like, finally, Richard, I get to show you my hometown. This is awesome. And so I brought him into the studio and you know, we did, we did this. Uh, and this is another image that when I photographed it, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it, but I was like, you know, we have these amazing, amazing costuming from a designer and you know, like those gloves are all handmade. They're incredible. And I was like, well, let's just see what happens. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, in this case here, this already, I'll turn this all off. Uh, so yeah, so here I've just, so this is one of the times I made a group, Ooh, personal work. I made a group, <laughs> but, uh, I started making the eye glow and I couldn't really figure out what I wanted to do with it. And then I made it these red pieces here on the sword, probably these like red pieces here. It was just hand painted. It's not even super well done. Uh, and then these are the this is the church uh, that I photographed. I actually photographed this in the UK again. And then I added in this sky and this heat saturation layer with clip to it just to, you know, do something to it. <laughs> <laughs> like if I turn it on and off, what does it do? I'm like, not much. <laughs> but it's there, so we leave it there. Uh, and then this is just a like a texture layer that I just threw over top. I kind of wanted it to be like dark and moody and scary and weird. Uh and then this is a frequency separation layer again, just like little tiny cleanup, um, you know, kind of smoothing things out, changing the direction of light a little bit. You just zoom in a little bit, and we'll see that. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Sorry, I keep forgetting this is four K monitor for you guys. Um, but yeah, so just kind of cleaning things up a little bit. Uh, I was just painting a little bit of light onto the sword itself, trying to direct where everything was going. You, you mentioned you're on 4K there. Are you working on those beautiful ViewSonic monitors that you love so yeah. much? Yeah, yeah, I really, I really like them. I'm, I, yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, and it's a price that's affordable. <laughs> so yeah. a lot of people are like, why aren't you using ISO? And I'm like, because I want to buy the Canon new Canon camera. <laughs> <laughs> on all the toys, <laughs> on all of them. Yeah, I got you know, um, yeah. I mean, these monitors are they're more than enough for me. So I mean. The nice thing is that I can I pre-programmed a bunch of different calibrations. So when I'm done working on image, I just scroll through these different calibrations because everyone in the world, most people are not viewing my work on a calibrated yeah. screen, right? But I need it to look a certain way when it's printing. So I edit it on a screen that's calibrated for printing, mm-hmm. and then I'll check it on all the other calibrations and you know see if anything really obvious is standing yeah. out where I'm just like, oh, that looks terrible. See if the gap uh, is off somewhere. But yeah, right. So I do try to build my work with those tolerances in mind. And it, it just helps me. Like, yeah, it's, I don't know. I super like it. <laughs> I can always tell when a guest's streaming to me f- through a 4K stream, uh, screen. Because uh, yeah. when we do these live shows and you say, oh, you're definitely on 4K because all your tools and your layers and <laughs> stuff gets super, super tiny. So next time you go and yeah. join, I'm going to get you to drop the resolution down. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> it's like, what, is that a layer? Uh, what is she working on? I can't see that. Yeah, sorry. But yeah, so this is all the fire. The fire took forever. Oh my god, it took so long, so much hand painting. So just, I made basically these these fire texture layers. You know, I just smashed a bunch of brushing together and made a layer of fire, basically. Yeah. So and there's no there's no real fire here. This is all brush technique. Yeah. Uh, I do have real fire. Uh, oh, later in this file right. yeah but this stuff here i was just trying to make it look like coals and so i was just mm. zooming in with these tiny little whole bunch of different kinds of textured brushes and just kind of trying to make this base glow because that would be the coal from where the fire is coming out of uh and then this is the curves layer to create the more glowing colors that were going to be on the sword hue saturation just dropping down so there's all these this green moss and stuff and i was like i don't really want the moss to be green i would like it to be like you know, brimstoney. So I just took the green channel and started putzing around with it and making it look more fiery. 
But yeah, so then here come all the fire layers and there's just like tons of them and trying to figure out where they were going to go and which type of fire texture I was going to use and because I have huge swaths of fire texture as well. And so it was just like finding out which one, which ones worked, which ones didn't work. You know, there's lots of spark layers here that are hard to see, uh, you know, and because what I want them to be is I want them to be noticed when it prints and if it prints big. Yeah. So I, I like to leave a lot of details that like they just get completely missed on Instagram and Facebook. They're not for sure. The file isn't made for that. The file is made for, you know, when someone sees it online and like, oh, yeah, that's super cool. I want to order that print. And then they get it and it's like a 24 by 36. And they're like, oh, my God, all these details I never saw before. That's what I want people to experience when they when they buy or license the work. So. Uh, yeah. So this is just a color effects layer of just like some detail extraction again. I, you know, I just like it like i said printing the stuff on metal it has a tendency to like make things a little softer so i make a little crunchier counteract that i like the way it looks uh and then this is i just duplicated the color effects layer and then i went into adobe camera raw and started playing around with the sliders again should have made it a smart object personal work i didn't <laughs> uh and then i just added a little bit of warmth again into the shot so Warming up the foreground because obviously there's all the fire around him. So then I duplicated the layer again, just added the warmth in. I just like the way the color grading looks in ACR. It's really easy for me. And uh, because I have access mostly to the orange channel. So because I do a lot of work with the orange channel, especially when people are involved. And then this is another soft light layer of color. Trying to really like bring forward that warmth and that heat, you know. Uh, hue saturation overall I was uh, I noticed that the blues were kind of the wrong shade for what I was wanting so I made it a little bit brighter or a little bit more I don't know <laughs> less teal it was basically like dropping the saturation and luminance on a blue channel um, and this guy here I am betting layer again name your layers don't do what I did <laughs> And uh, then just adding a little bit of atmospheric depth to behind him because I wanted there to be some space behind him in the building. So, yeah, that's kind of how that one came together. So, looks yeah, great. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. As always, sorry. Oh, I see what it is. One of those layers that I was like, I don't know what that is. I, I liquefied the fur to be a little bit bigger, so it took up a little bit more space. Uh, give Richard those bigger shoulders. <laughs> yeah, those big, beefy shoulders. <laughs> Let's go. Cool. Here's here's an interesting question. I can't I can't remember if we've asked you this before. We have music or no music, either on a photo oh shoot God. or when editing. Music all the time, all the time. Yeah, all the time. That that's like my friend when I'm working in the studio or when I'm working on the computer. Uh, even before I do lectures or presentations or whatever, I'll take five minutes before everything goes live and I just listen to music and I just quiet my brain what every time. What kind of music? That's the next question. I listen to a lot of heavy metal. A lot of heavy metal. <laughs> we're, we're on the same uh, boat I, there. Yeah, I do love my metal a lot. Uh, I listen to a lot of hard rock. I also, I listen to, uh, my sister calls it douchey pop. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, strangely enough, uh, I can't, and the movie uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, but the soundtracks are actually quite nice, especially if I'm photographing like a boudoir clients or something like that. You know, like they want to feel a certain way. Like I'm mm. not gonna play heavy metal for every client. That's no. just rude, right? Like yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Set the scene. These... Exactly. Yeah. So I have I have depending on what we're photographing, I'll play music that kind of associates with that. Um, assuming that the person that I'm photographing is down with it. So um, yeah, we definitely want to get everything in the same same mindset if i'm working on something that's very soft and pretty and whatever i probably won't listen to metal i'll listen to something that fits that but yeah in this case here this photograph with richard uh everyone on set loves iron maiden so <laughs> there was a lot that, was, that. that was my youth that's my band <laughs> i mean i traveled the world uh listening to iron maiden and here's here's an interesting uh tangent um we have, we have a few few traditions at Smug Mug, so many of them you know about, Renee, but mm -hmm. when you when you start working at Smug Mug, everybody who gets employed at Smug Mug gets to have their face painted by a professional face paint artist. And um, 
you can pick any character you want, but it tends to be one of your heroes. Many, 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 many of them are, you know, kind of Marvel superheroes, uh, comic heroes, that type of thing. Um, and when I was asked to do my face paint, I could not think of who I wanted to be. Um, so I don't know if you know this, Rene, do you? But do you know who my face paint is? Eddie? It's Eddie the Head. Yeah, Iron Maiden mask it. Yeah. I knew it. So yeah, I'll, I didn't I'll, know that, but that makes sense. <laughs> I'll have to share that. I'll have to share that image with you all at some point. But yeah, I got painted as Eddie the Head as my hero uh, face paint at Smug Mug to fulfill That's one of those so traditions. Awesome. So there you go. Um, we have a request. I think uh -oh. I think this may be the first request we've had here on Smug Mug Live. So, um, Davian, hey Davian, Davian Washington asks, request, Renee, can you show the Gandalf image, please? <laughs> Do you have that uh, lined up? Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Well, while, um, you're, while you're trying to find that, let's see what oh, else I'm is Oh, I'm going to turn off my screen sharing while I look through these. Uh, horrific. <laughs> Curtis <laughs> asks, One Republic or Counting Crows? I think that might be mm -hmm. a... Maybe trying to start something I've there. I've never really got too much into either one of those, if I'm honest. Maybe that makes me a bad person. Um, but yeah, no, I've, I've never really got too much into either one of those. i got to plug in another hard drive here one second. I wish I had that image to hand. I actually, it's actually hanging on my wall over here, but I'm all, <laughs> I'm all wired in, so I can't actually even reach for it. But I'll, uh, I'll share that. Yeah, Eddie the Head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if That's you, amazing. If you, and if you don't know who Iron Maiden is, then you have no clue what we're talking about. But he is yeah, the mascot sorry. of the Iron Maiden <laughs> band, but I, which I spent all my money on as a teenager, following them around the world. Um, so, yeah. That's a good way to do it, though. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. I miss live music so much. It's probably one of the things I miss yeah. most about lockdown is, is the ability to go to, to live music. It's one of my favourite things to do, and... Um, we're not getting to do it for a while, certainly not here in Scotland, I don't think, but um, soon, hopefully. Thank yeah, goodness. I miss miss live shows a lot. I go through binges where I won't go to anything for a while, and then I will just spend a year, and whenever I'm in a city, I will look around and see what shows are on, and mm. I'll take a break from whatever work I'm doing and go see a show. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I get that a lot. All right, yeah, I got the Ray Wizard King show pulled up here. So, so is Ray, Ray is the same character that was Santa Claus in the yeah. first image? Yeah, cool. I, I love photographing Ray. I mean, he's he's down for everything, and he's got a super good attitude, and he's super creative. He's also a photographer himself. Yep. Um, but, yeah, no, I I really like working with him. It's really – it's a – pleasant experience so i'm sure everybody who has saw this image has shouted the same thing every time they see this image right you know what it is you know what i mean what what did they shout oh shouting <laughs> in the chat you shall not pass oh, yeah, yeah. of course yeah <laughs> yeah so this was actually an experiment i wasn't sure how it would work so i have this light stick a girlfriend of mine gave me a light stick for a birthday present and i was like oh my god you're amazing <laughs> And uh, and so I was like, well, I wonder what would happen if I photographed someone, uh, you know, holding it with a gel and so that the light would hit their face. And it's continuous light, so it's obviously not nearly as bright as a strobe, so I had to turn the power down on the strobes quite far in order to get that little bit of light. But forever I've been painting this light, and of course, obviously, if you get it in camera, it's better. So, yeah, that that's what this experiment was. It was literally the whole point was to see if I could do this and turns out it can so that's cool but yeah i've had i've had some people like tear me apart in the comment section because they're like the shadow's going the wrong way and i'm like the shadow's not going the wrong way the light is going from here to here from like a big imaginary window up there and then there's this light here that's the fill light it is not the main light and i will fight anyone who says <laughs> otherwise <laughs> there, there can be multiple light sources there normally exactly. is yeah Exactly. So anyways, yeah, I've, I've watched lots of people online just be like, the light's the wrong way. And I'm like, you are not, can't even be a part of this conversation because you're so out of touch. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's how this looked. I had a fan turned on there and uh, this main light source up here. I definitely should have added more fill light though, because I had to pull it out afterwards and that sucked. Um, but yeah, so anyways, so I shrunk them down to the right size. Uh, and then, uh, eh, that makes sense later. So this is, 
Sorry, Davian, this is like a terrible PSD. Because this was an experiment, I was even worse than usual. <laughs> um, but so here's the background pieces. Let's turn that off. And there we go. Okay, so yeah, so then I masked out the stick that was in his hand. And then I started adding in all these fire layers and stuff and painting in some color. Brought down the luminance on his uh, jacket, just like his outfit, just a little bit. Um, Ray's wife actually made this costume it's amazing and I was like how did you do that like sewing is is basically <laughs> witchcraft to me I'm so impressed by it <laughs> but uh yeah so then just you know again adding more more color more like glowingness etc uh detail extraction a lot it's <laughs> there's probably a lot of noise in this file I haven't printed it very very big yet I've printed it large but not huge um but yeah, and then so this here, I just basically duplicated this layer, went into Adobe Camera Raw and started pushing around with the color temperature, basically just the, adding a bunch of blue back into it. And then I added a little more glowy to the fire because I was like, oh, that thing I did kind of got rid of that. Uh, I'm sure all the actual professional retouchers in this room are just like chewing off their fingernails at all the bad habits in this file. <laughs> Uh, this is another mystery layer that I'm sure does something handy somewhere. Uh, hue, hue saturation. So these green plants. So let's see here. Oh, wrong direction. Just so to, there's these just little... to let you know, they're they're not chewing off their fingers. They're actually all shouting quotes from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <in> the... <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. Um, yeah, I was just talking to friends about how whenever I make potatoes, I think taters. <laughs> What's taters, precious? <laughs> Um, but yeah, so this was just, I wanted to get rid of some of that night, like bright neon green in the flora and the background. And so I just went to the green channel and I was like, off you go. So that's where that came from. So Be then it gives it purple. Yeah, exactly. Purple in the background. Uh, this is frequency separation layer. Again, it should be in a group, but it's not. So I just wanted to clean up like all these glowing pieces and there was actually, so this, this, uh, this ruin site was actually getting set up for a rave that night when I photographed there. So there was metal and like speakers and crap everywhere. So I frequency separated and just like cleaned up all of that junk because it was everywhere. There's so much to get rid of. Uh, this is basically just, uh, like a texture layer to kind of bring this like misty smoothy stuff coming along the screen there just to kind of make it feel like the air had something in it you know there was like some kind of dust um at the end back into adobe camera raw again because i was like i don't know maybe blue maybe green i don't know and so <laughs> there's a lot of back and forth of blue or green blue or green blue or green and uh the work that i had done obviously because i had done this so destructively uh destroyed those fire layers so i had to put new ones over top <laughs> so because that's what happens when you work destructively is it destroys the images it's, it's yeah so you're constantly having to fix stuff um then i straightened out this little post here because i wanted obviously the wind is coming backwards so i wanted the fire to be coming towards him as well because the sleeve is open and the fabric is moving a little bit back so i wanted the fire to be coming towards his face a little bit uh, which meant that if it's coming towards you, you can see this the the wick basically that the fire's on. Color look up, and then I decided that green was not the color, and I went back to blue. <laughs> and then a curves layer, and then just a little bit of dodge and burning. So, yeah, that file's a mess. Actually, th there's one thing about this image that I uh, that still bothers me that eventually I'm gonna go in and fix. Uh, so there's these little highlights here on the ground where I missed it, where I screwed up making the shadow and they bother me. I stare at them all the time. Yeah. We'll, we'll never, like, we'll never forgive you for those that jumped out yeah. straight at me is the minute you said it. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, it's funny because you know, yeah, the internet likes to shout and I'm just like, no, no, no. The thing that's actually screwed up with the image is not the one you're complaining about. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I yeah, love so that's that one. I love the, the conversation about, you know, destroying things as you go, but, you know, that's, that's artwork. You think of traditional artwork, you know, the great masters when they were doing oil painting, you know, there's layers and layers of stuff that gives them an idea and then they paint over it to do something else and then they have to replace it. And if you were to scrape back all those layers and 
the Mona Lisa, I'm sure you would find lots of changes or, you know, many different eye shapes and stuff under there. I am assuming that's just how you get to that final image. So don't apologize for destructing, destroying things. Maybe you could have well, done layers in a way that didn't destroy it, but, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I was, if, if I had a client or a customer come to me and say that they wanted the, that file and for whatever reason, the layer stack to go with it, I would rebuild it in a way that mm. would make sense for a customer. So, you know, there would be the the church layer and then there would be the wizard on top and because i already know what kind of color grading i want it would be a lot less layers so most of my layers when they really start to add up are just because you know i can't make up my mind <laughs> and then it's just like stacks and stacks and stacks of like what if this what if that you know and at that point i know i just need to get up and walk away well the folks watching really really loved seeing that image obviously requested <laughs> to see it but i think they just loved the opportunity to Shout in capitals, you shall not pass all the way down my, <laughs> my chat feed. It's quite fun to watch that. I'll have to take a screenshot of that one. It's quite good. Um, that's awesome. That's a, that's a great image. Uh, Going to give a little shout out to a few things that I've already mentioned. Uh, of course, the podcast, which I'm now mentioning far too many times during this episode, and Renee's uh, Smug Mug film, uh, Dreams of a Digital Artist, which you can watch here. Um, if people want to find out a little bit more about you, Renee. In fact, you can stop sharing your screen actually as well. That would get a bit more bandwidth to your camera. Um, <laughs> there we go. So if people want to find out a little bit more about you uh, on your own channels, where can people go? I've got your your hashtag or your at tag underneath your, your name here at Renee Robin Photography. But where else can yeah. they find you? Uh, yeah, so I have a, a, a sorely ignored YouTube channel that I'm slowly starting to revive. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, just youtube.com slash Renee Robin or Renee Robin Photo. I forget which one. <laughs> it's Renee Robin Photo, I think. There you oh, go. <laughs> that one. Uh, yeah, and then, of course, there's Instagram, Renee Robin Photography, Facebook, and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. So. Yep. Yeah. You, you'll find her main website, obviously, on the SmugMug platform, which we are so grateful to have you as an ambassador here at SmugMug. We appreciate it so much. Um, I will put all those links. In fact, I think they're already in the description of this episode. Uh, this is your call to get your final questions in, if you have any, for Renee, because it takes 30 seconds for me to see the question. So get those last questions in. While you're thinking of a question, I'm going to ask you another favour. Hit that subscribe button hit a little bell notification. That way you'll be notified of all the other episodes uh, we've got coming here on Smug Mug Live when we launch them. Those of you who are asking questions about Capture One, come back on Tuesday. Uh, I think it's at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, which is 6 p.m. here in the UK. Uh, David Grover from Capture One is going to join me and talk about all the cool stuff that you can get on Capture One. So that's going to be a great episode and yeah just keep in touch and give us a thumbs up in in the chat if you've enjoyed this episode uh Rene, I'm, I'm waffling a little bit just to see if there's any other questions coming in but i think they're still having uh chats back and <laughs> forward about lords of the rings but uh thank you everybody who's joined in the in the chat it's been it's actually been a real fun chat that was one of the funnest chats to see all the the great conversation going on in the side there so thank you everybody for making it such a fun chat today uh, Renee, what's what's next for you? What's on the horizon? Nobody has an answer for that, I don't think, right now. <laughs> I mean, uh, our economy here is slowly starting to reopen. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, everything changes so quick right now. It's kind of hard to say like what's coming up because yeah, I I was supposed to be in. Uh, I saw there was one someone there from Argentina, and I was like, oh my god, I was supposed to be there in. Uh, March mm -hmm. and that fell apart 12 hours before my flight so uh, yeah it's I don't know <laughs> we, bo we both had a very interesting March I cancelled a flight yeah. to the Bahamas of all places five hours before I left and you were 12 hours before you left to Argentina both yeah. of us would have been stranded in those places which you know you know, stranded in the Bahamas doesn't sound horrific, but being away from family would have sucked. So, uh, yeah, it's been an interesting time. But maybe if if things don't get back up and running uh, as quick as we like, we'll we'll just have you back here on Smug Mug Live, and we'll do <laughs> we'll do another episode, and we'll do a whole episode about sharpening. That would be super. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> 
There's so many ways to do it. Oh my god, yeah. I'm actually I am working on some little like micro tutorials. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because I have I have I have of course the tutorials that I love with Creative Live and, and ProEDU and those are like tons and tons of work and months of planning and you know, days and days of filming. Uh but I have these little like snippets like little micro chapters of things that i think are interesting but they don't there's not enough for a full tutorial so i think i'm going to start compiling those things together while well, i am starting to compile them together and uh yeah so those will be launching somewhere in the next six months kind of scattered out yeah i actually um uh, i've been experimenting strangely enough with uh patreon mm. and uh it just, you know, and I have been for the last year. So this wasn't something that started up out of COVID. I was just like, okay, like, I wonder if what happens. So I've been experimenting with that. And that's where, like, all the the ideas are going of, like, hey, so what if this? So what if mm. this? And kind of, like, getting the feedback. So, Plus you yeah, we'll see. content to give to your Patreons as well. So it's nice to have those little snippets yeah. but have a group of people that you can bounce ideas off of that's cool you mentioned yeah. your you mentioned your tutorials there and it's it's a great reminder of that if you are a smug mug customer or indeed a Flickr customer if you go to the perks section at either smug mug perks or Flickr perks uh renee has kindly given us a discount to her tutorials on there so i think it's a two for one if you go to Renee's link on our Smug Mug or Flickr Perks page. Here's the most important question of the show actually has come in. Uh-oh. Gary asks, how are you not swearing? <laughs> <laughs> she has her professional because... radio voice on, that's why. Because <laughs> yeah, Smug Mug asked me not to, and I respect and really like Smug Mug. Nice. I mean, I can drop it. <laughs> drop an F-bomb before we go. No fucking problem. <laughs> yeah, see, I had to be one. Apologies, everybody. I, I just don't know where she gets it from. But, yeah, we try and keep it PG Trying related. to keep it, you know, yeah. I'll beat yeah, that one out uh, later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, my, my uh, the tutorial things will be my personality. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Got to be yourself, that's that's for sure. There's a time and place to be a, a jerk. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. not it. <laughs> Renee, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure catching up with you. Thank you for giving us your time and agreeing to do this. Uh, I've been looking forward to this show. Uh, it's always a pleasure to spend some time with you. Yeah, I mean, thanks so much for having me on. I've been I've been watching the Smug Mug Lives as they've been happening, and so it's really, really cool to be a part of it. So, And as always, being a part of the Smug Mug family has been really great. So thank yeah. you for that. Well, you're definitely a part of the family. You know that. Uh, and. <laughs> We, we hope you all join the family, but Renee, thank you so much. Again, folks, go click on that subscribe button for me and that uh, little bell notification. Join me back next week on Tuesday and Thursday. Thank you so much again, Renee. Thank you for your time. We will see you on the next episode of Smug Mug Live. Wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Look after yourselves and be good, be kind, and we'll see you soon. Bye.